Hi, this is Lynn Langett for All Things Data. In today's screencast, I'm going to take a look at using Power BI in Excel 2013 and Facebook. In particular, I'm going to take a look at uh, Power Query and the Facebook Open Graph data. So here's a little bit about me if you've not watched one of my screencasts before. You can see I'm an MVP for SQL Server. I'm an, uh, the equivalent of an MVP for Google Cloud, for MongoDB. I'm also Cloudera certified and was a former Microsoft employee. So the Power BI suite, as uh, released and available right now, consists of a couple of different power parts, if you will. So Power Query is the thing I'm going to look most at today, which is going to allow us to more easily query and clean Facebook data uh, from my own Facebook uh, timeline. Power Pivot, many of you are probably familiar with, now included in Excel 2013, is primarily used to model multiple tables, and it is included in Excel uh, 2013, so long as you have the appropriate addition. Power View and Map are uh, prettier or fancier visualizers, and uh, you can view or you can map. Facebook Open Graph is a tool available for Facebook developers which can allow a interactive query through the browser and can be helpful during this process of working with Facebook data with Power Query. I think you'll see why in the demo. So uh, I'll give a URL for this and I'll recommend that you also uh, use this tool when you're working with Facebook data. I have done a series of other YouTube presentations on working directly with Open Graph, so I'll link them here as well so you can take a look at those if you're interested. So now we're going to switch to the demo where I'm going to use Power BI with Facebook data. So to start the demo, I will talk about the scenario or what motivated me to try this out. I was interested in understanding Power Query more, and yesterday was my birthday. So a whole bunch of people, as usual, posted on my Facebook timeline. Thank you to everyone that did that. It makes me so happy, and just I had a great birthday, so thank you very much. And I was having a hard time visualizing and just understanding who all posted. So I thought, well, let me just use some of these new tools. So you can see if I scroll up and down my timeline, um, I have bunches of different posts about my birthday. Um, some are videos, some are notes, and uh, just really a lot of great stuff, but it, it wasn't easy for me to visualize it. So what I decided to do is use the new tools inside of Excel under Power Query to query that data. Now I had done some work with the Facebook Open Graph before, so I had some understanding of what the data looked like. If you're brand new to it, uh, working directly here might be a little bit confusing, because if you click on uh, Power Query in Excel 2013, once you download it, say from other sources and from Facebook, the first thing that you'll be presented with is a dialog box to authenticate, which I've already done. Now once you've authenticated, that will, uh, connection information will be stored in data source settings, and then you can supply me, meaning yourself, your username, or an object ID. And again, to get that kind of information using that open graph tool that I talked about in the slides would be quite helpful. So then you select what aspect of uh, this particular object you want to return back through Power Query. So you can see I've got some things here, activities, books, feed, friend list, um, likes, movies, posts, so on and so forth. So you can think of these as kind of constrained queries. Now notice you also do have a custom once you get more comfortable with this. Now Power Query is a beta product, and right now if you click custom, it doesn't really give you any help. Um, I'm hoping that in the future there'll be some sort of help or documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go to my uh, feed, and then I'm going to say okay. Now if you've ever seen Power Query before, it's going to open up a query window. So it opens up a window inside of Excel, and this is your manipulation window. Now the speed at which this downloads is dependent on your internet connection and the speed that would, uh, Facebook returns the data. And in playing around with this yesterday, I found sometimes it was really quick and sometimes it wasn't. Now this is where you make manipulations to your data uh, so that you can visualize it better. Now I'm going to kind of just go fast over this because I spent quite a lot of time uh, yesterday figuring out which columns and which information I wanted. So um, I'm just going to go through this and then I'll speed up the video so that you can um, you can see the process here. So just to get us started, I do not want this ID, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this column. And you can see I've got the function uh, information exposed up at the top. This is a setting inside of the query so that if, once I am comfortable with the function language, I could just uh, write directly if I wanted to. 
I'm going to remove the two because uh, I know they're to me. And uh, then I'm going to remove the created time. I'm just going to go ahead and remove some columns here. And I'll, again, I'll speed up the video because I just don't need all these columns. Now, when I get to the time column, if I right click on it, I'm going to want to change the type. Right now it's text. I'm going to want to change it into date and time because I'm going to want to do a filter to only return the uh, posts that were put on my timeline over a day or, or the day before because of um, going around the world. And I really, um, I'm not, now I've got this down to from, which is showing me a link, the message, the type, the time, and the place, which is showing me uh, a, a link as well. So let me look on type and see if uh, I filter, I don't want to filter this out at all. So yeah, I really don't want all this stuff. I just want status updates. So I'm going to just say status, and that's going to apply that filter. And again, you can see the, the formula here, new formula language. And uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to investigate what this link leads to for place. So to do that, I right click and I say drill down. And you can see that this is not a useful field. Now, if I was unsure, I could actually do the whole thing, but I have quite a lot of, of stuff here. I can just try one more to see if this is a, a field of interest. doesn't seem interesting to me, so I'm going to take that off. I'm going to remove that. Now, let me do the same thing with this one, and I'm going to drill down. And this is interesting to me because it has my friend name, which I care about, and the ID, which I'm going to need. So I'm going to then click this little button right here. And then I'm going to specify which columns I want to be expanded. So I want the ID and the name, and I don't think I want an object link, but let me look at that one more time and see what that object link is. And I'm going to right click this, and I'm going to drill down. And this is just more information about this contact, which I, I'm not wanting for this particular query. So I'm going to go back up. And then when I expand this out, when I expand this out, I really only want the ID and the name. So let me just select those two. And then and I clicked on this little expand button here and I clicked OK. And now this is expanded out. So this is really how I want the data to look. I want to know the ID because I'm going to want to find out where my friends are located. So I can see like around the world who's wished me happy birthday, um, what their name is. And in order to get their location, I need their ID. And that's going to load this into uh, Excel. So the way that Power Query works is if I wanted to go and do some more manipulation of the data, I would click back on Filter and Shape. Now notice here's what I was saying about waiting for Facebook. And I have Enable Download set to on and Load to Worksheet set to on, which makes a copy of the data in. Okay, you can see that the data is still loading, and I probably should have done a time filter because it just keeps on going and going, and I really only want the last day, so I'm going to click Stop. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and click back on Filter and Shape. And now what I'm going to need to do is filter so that I don't retrieve all this information. So I want to say... Uh, that my date time filter is greater than or equal to probably the day before my birthday here. So, I had some people start a little early, so let me just put it in this date right here. And now let me go ahead and say done. Okay, this thing loaded. It looks like we have 188 rows, so thanks to all of you wishing me happy birthday, but there's a few rows that look like they need to be filtered out because these are just status updates I made yesterday. So let me filter my own name out here. How I could find where the location was of people. So again, as we work with different kinds of data, we have to understand how our tools work and when we might want to go use other tools. So one of the reasons I said do this because I've done some work with Facebook. So uh, something that I've used quite a lot is the Graph Explorer. So you go to developers.facebook.com and tools and you go to the Graph API Explorer. And because I'm signed in, I have this key and uh, I can go and I can query um, information. So there's many different ways you can interact with Facebook Open Graph, but this can help you to understand what the information is 
you might also need to query some information out of here because I didn't find an easy way through Power Query to get the location information. And I don't know, maybe it was just because I was more familiar with, with Facebook uh, Open Graph that I was able to do it this way. So I went to Connections and I went to Friends. And then under Friends, what I wanted to get was the location. Because I want to see where you know people were greeting me from around the world. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. And it's returned, and this is sort of the interesting part, in a format that uh, will be a little bit tricky to work with in Excel, which is JSON data. So you can see here's the format. So I just literally requested for my ID uh, on Facebook, uh, here's my friend ID, and here's the ID of the location, and it's Seattle. Now I found a ton of things on the web that were able to easily parse JSON data that was not nested. Um, and so that was super easy, because I was doing some other queries against this, just trying some stuff out. Um, but I didn't find so many free tools that could parse JSON data um, that was nested. I literally just copied it. But the problem was that when I went back to Power Query, so this is an ask for the team guys, um, is that, I'm going to discard this, that when I say from file, I would love to see from JSON because there's a lot of JSON data out there. Now the way that I actually solved this, there's different ways you could use VBA or something, is I use LinkPad. And, um, got some some dev help here I didn't do this one on my own and uh, you know wrote a query to return this data back and then just saved it and then imported it and I'll kind of show you what that looks like just for time this is the cooking show version so you can see here's the IDs and uh, once I was done with it in LinkPad I basically exported it to Excel um, and LinkPad is a free tool uh, there's a paid version as well and so then I just loaded that in now that takes us to another sort of interesting aspect of Power Query and Power Pivot, uh, something I learned in this and I wanted to share with you know all you guys listening. So in Power Query, there's Merge and Append, and it's just really like the icons. So Merge is basically add some uh, columns across, and that's ultimately what I ended up doing here. Uh, so then what I did is I wanted to have them going across, so that's a merge. So the way that that works is you click Merge, and that's how I got this, basically. Now I added a few columns, um, and I used the Flash Fill feature, which is sort of neat, if you've never seen that before, where it detects the pattern and just flash fills down, because I wanted to have city, state, and country, just for the purposes of pivoting. I thought that would be fun. Um, a, um, append is if you have, like, uh, wanting to go down. It's like a union, basically. This is like a join, and this is like a union. So this is within... Um, data within Power Query. Now, of course, once I got done with my friends and their locations, then I wanted to match them up with the greetings, which I guess I could have done in here. But what I thought of doing was use Power Pivot because that's sort of naturally where you join. So what I did is I would add this to the data model using diagram view. I can join them and I can pivot. There you go. And so I did that. So then when you're done, of course, you can throw that into a pivot table, which I did as well. And let me go there. Cooking show, right? And, and then I graphed it. So the process basically of this was to take a look at what data was available from Facebook. And uh, my little tip of the day is to use the Facebook Open Graph tool to explore in conjunction with Power Query. Uh, of course, you have to have Power Pivot if you want to join tables, if you want to use it that way. Um, and download Power Query Power Map. Uh, and you may have to deal with JSON parsing if you can't get everything to come through um, Power Query. So you need to figure out a solution for that. So as I wind this out, a couple other things. In addition to my data work, I run a nonprofit called Teaching Kids Programming, which is part of the Mona Foundation. We have a free and open source courseware. We have our first lesson in C Sharp on Pluralsight free, so teach your kids to program. Um, we also have extended lessons in Java and Small Basic, about uh, 20 hours worth of lessons. And uh, we've been recognized by Microsoft, so uh, take a minute to uh, vote at AzureDevs.com. The contest ends October 31st, and if we stay on the leaderboard, then we can get between ten dollars and $50,000 to continue our work creating this courseware. So this is Lynn Langett for All Things Data. Uh, our, uh, Follow my YouTube for more videos. I have lots more videos to come, and uh, have a great day.